Dear students, in this unit, we will talk about the functional and structural diversity in protists. As you are aware that protists are nutritionally the most diverse of the organisms. Now, we see that in phylum protista, all kinds of mode of nutrition exist. For example, most of the protists, they are photoautotrophs, which mean that they have chlorophyll which help them in the synthesis of their food with the help of sunlight. So mostly they are present as a photoautotrophs and they are present in all habitats. They are present in fresh waters. They are present in aquatic waters as well as there are some terrestrial protists which are also helping in the synthesis of uh, uh, photosynthesis uh, during their mode of nutrition. So. Uh, they are main and vital uh, photosynthetic organism on this planet. Imagine that, just imagine that they do photosynthesis more than whole of the plants which are present on this planet Earth. So just imagine that if there are no protists, what would be the level of oxygen on this planet and there will be a serious consequences without the presence of these photoautotrophic protists on this uh, planet Earth. Now, some of the protists, they are heterotrophs. That means that they cannot synthesize their own food. They have to ingest uh, organic matter or other food particles and synthesize their own food by digesting them, just like the animals. While some uh, protists, they are mixotrophs which means that they also have chlorophylls and most of the part of their life, they synthesize their own food. But what happens that sometimes when they are not exposed to light, in the absence of light, they can absorb organic molecule and they can also use them to produce energy. Uh, protests include photosynthetic algal protists, ingestive protozoans, and absorptive protists. That means that photos photosynthetic algal protists, they can photosynthesize their own food, while ingestive protozoans, they need external sources like external food particles to take them inside their body and use them as energy sources. Now, their habitats, they are also very diverse. They live in aquatic environment, they live in um, uh, terrestrial environment. Even in, when we talk about the aquatic environment, they mostly live in freshwater environment. They are also present in the marine ecosystems as well. Now, life cycle of protists, that also varies greatly. Some are exclusively asexual, while most of them, they have asexual life cycle as well as meiosis and syngamy sexual life cycle during their lifetime. Now, many species of these protists, which are especially the photoautotrophs, they resulted from the uh, two rounds of endosymbiosis process. We know that symbiosis is a process in which two organisms, they come close to each other and then they benefit each other. So according to two theories, Protest in the first round, they absorb mitochondria and that mitochondria has become the integral part of those protests. It helped them in synthesizing the energy. And then plastid, they also evolved by the endosymbiosis of photosynthetic cyanobacterium. So during the course of evolution, a cyanobacterium, it came in close contact with these protests and it entered inside their body and became a permanent part of it and helps in the photosynthesis of those photoautotrophic protists.